The people that is listening, dude, Flosser is the cheapest tool in the market for the ROI that it brings back. Like, it's crazy. Like, maybe I'm paying, I don't even know how much I pay on Flosser a month because I, it's an auto pay for maybe for like a year or so. I don't I have no clue. Um, but it's whatever the pricing is, but it's like, I know that every month because I have closer, I'm saving maybe at least five to 10 grand minimum. And I know that I'm paying way less on closer. So I, that's why I don't even look up how much I'm paying. I, I, I have no clue literally. Well, don't worry after this interview i'll go in and 10 extra pricing for you so you can pay more well you don't <laughs> so, need to oh. i don't want to i want to back up because what you said sounds pretty hyperbole i'm saving five to ten thousand dollars a month people are going to think oh joe's just transcranded he's dude my churn on clients like a client pay me between 2500 to 10 grand a month mm-hmm. and i was losing at least two clients a month. I was getting three and losing two. I was growing, but I was losing clients. So that, that's that's already 10 grand there just because I my process weren't on point. Also hiring new people, me being have like me having to spend my own time. If I make 40 grand a month, for example, my time, my hour uh working hour is what like a thousand dollar no 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 a thousand dollar like to 300 bucks and if i have to spend that time teaching somebody or telling somebody hey do this do this do this i'm basically losing that money with that person that and it's already on a flow like being super conservative 10 grand a month is what closer is saving and if you think about it from that perspective it is believable let's say that the average person's time the average business owner's time is what we'll call it 250 bucks an hour and if they're doing a lot of the training themselves now, let's say it takes you know, 10 hours conservatively, 10 hours to onboard an employee, that's 2,500 bucks of their time. And it's not only the onboarding, it's like the everyday processes because now a problem come to me, I fix it, and I fix it also on flows. Now the problem don't come to me again or shouldn't. Before, I could have the same freaking problem 17 times in a week. And I'm so overwhelmed that I don't even know like where to start. And it's not 10 hours. Now you have an extra 17 hours of overwhelming uh, me being at 11 p.m. in my computer trying to solve something that if I did it in the right way at the beginning, I won't have. So what would you say, there's probably some people listening to this who are thinking, oh, you know, it sounds good, but changing, it's a lot of work, or maybe they don't even have anything in place now. Um, you know, I don't have all those templates and I'd have to make them all. And Oh, it just seems like so much work. What would, if that was your friend running their business, whatever it was, and they were kind of drowning like you were before, what would you, what would you tell them? Well. Like you have the superpower of cloning yourself. Like we as a business owners or me at least, I complain a lot like, holy crap, if I don't do this myself, nobody will do it well. Mm -hmm. So now I don't have to cry for that that much uh, because I just have to focus on doing it well once and record it and that's it. And I send that video to my employee and she have to, you know, chop it down and put it in closer and that's it. It's like your life is going to, uh, at least for me, like, <laughs> I don't know how you have your business, but my business was a mess uh, because I'm not super a structure. And, and, and I thought that it was going to be more complicated by having all of these SOPs and weird crap. But like, it's totally the opposite. Like, it's so simple that you can just type down and write, figure out which flow are you trying to find to solve something. And you just go 30 seconds and you fix it. It's not, 
instead of having the same issue every week, 10 times, the same problem, I used to have the same issue 10, 15 times in a week. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to fix it, but I'm, in my mind, it's like, this guy is an idiot. And it's not that my employee was an idiot. It was that my process to teach them, it wasn't as a structure and easy for them. Uh, because I... <clears throat> Sometimes because I, I'm angry, maybe at them, I was doing the training fast. I was saying, dude, you are uh, whatever, like you have to do this this way. Yeah. Uh, instead of just putting it on a video step by step. And before if now they come to me with a problem and I say, OK, do you do you want to flosser and check that out and see uh, step by step if we and now it's cool because I that when they do something wrong, we both we go both together to Flosser and we say, okay, let's 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 watch the, this 32 second video and let's see if you did it that way. Mm -hmm. And if they did it that way and didn't work, it's okay. I'll have to replace that 32 second video. But if they didn't, they will have problems right away with me because like they I have like the problem have to go first to Flosser before coming to me or we can before coming to the manager. So just yeah. so folks know, Flosser, um, you can put all sorts of content. Joe mentions videos a lot. You can absolutely embed videos in Flosser. <laughs> I'm actually not a big fan of embedding videos in Flosser. In all of our SOPs, it's just pictures and words, pictures and words and check boxes and all this stuff because even a 32, I mean, I can take a new screenshot, make some new red arrows and not have to shoot a 30 second video. And then I don't have to have anybody watching a 30 second video or a 60 second video. So Poster gives you the flexibility of, of putting your content in, in whatever way you would like. So don't think it's just a video library. I like to describe it to people as though it's on checklists on steroids. Um, yes. because there's all this interactivity and you can assign workflows and give them due dates and so forth. The other thing that I wanted to mention, just so people really understand, so I produce a podcast. I've been producing it for a decade now. And over the years, our podcast production process has become increasingly complex because we do more and more stuff. So it's about 127 steps long. <laughs> so just imagine that Carla, who manages the show on my team and and was she was she leave? And she's only been with us, I don't know, I don't even remember now, 16 months, something like that. It was pretty effortless to for us to bring Carla up to speed because the checklists has 127 steps. Each individual step is super detailed in the instructions. And over even during her tenure here, she's discovered ways to improve efficiency and make changes to the SOP template and so forth. And, and it really, just for me, being a podcast host, I mean, all I do is talk on the microphone. That's it. And then it goes to the team and they handle the 27, 127 steps get divided up amongst the various people. And it's always the same people doing the same steps because that's where our processes are designed. So I say this because if in your, I know in everyone's business, they might not do a podcast, but in everyone who's listening to this, who has a business, you have a metaphor equivalent of a podcast. You have a thing that you're doing, and you probably have many things that you're doing over and over and over and over again. And you're doing a lot of it yourself. And you'd be amazed at how much of it you can delegate to somebody else if you do what I've done and what Joe has done and simply take the time to document the process once so that you don't ever have to do it again. I love to say having great SOPs will set you free and it really will because now you're not the one who has all the knowledge in your head. You've made the knowledge easily shareable across your entire organization, no matter where in the world they're located. <laughs>